Joining me now are three of the best political analysts in the country. Here in New York, Pulitzer Prize winning columnist for the New York Daily News, Michael Goodwin. We have syndicated columnist Miguel Perez with us. And in our Los Angeles bureau, Ben Smith, senior political reporter for Politico.com. Gentlemen, thank you for being with us. You know, we just heard uh, Bill Tucker's report. The economy, the housing crisis, the economy, these are things that are weighing on the campaign. They're weighing on the minds of Americans. And the economic stimulus package appears to be politically bogged down. Let's start with Ben. I give the deference to the most remote uh, correspondents. So, ben, what do you think? Do we have a chance of getting this done, or is this politically bogged down at this point? Well, Harry Reid has said he's going to. He, the, the, you know, they can't. They can't get it done at all until John McCain, Hillary Clinton, and um, Barack Obama get back off the trail. So, so it's certain they're certainly going to wait for that. But you know, for all three of them. And, and, for, you know, and for both parties, there's a lot of incentive to get something passed, and there's, and there's sort of a minimal package that the House got through that seems like it contains elements that everybody, that everybody can agree on, particularly just injecting some cash right into the economy. And yet there's some uh, political additions, too. Um, this, uh, there's a February 15th deadline. Do you think they'll make it, Miguel? I don't know. I, you know, I'm following up on what Ben just said, I, I think it's so disgusting that the American people are watching our Congress and our president and everybody it, that we are supposedly put it there to represent us and to do well for us, stagnating this way because it's stagnant. The Congress is not going in any direction, and you know it makes me very, very upset. And I'm sure a lot of Americans are very upset. You know, here's this all these politicians asking us for their vote, and now Harry Reid is saying he has to wait for the three main political candidates to go back to Washington so that we could solve this emergency? No, the situation it's is absurd. abysmal. It is abysmal, and the bills don't stop at the American kitchen table, that's for sure. Well, well let's not overstate, though, what the stimulus will do. I mean, people will get a certain amount of a, a rebate, businesses will get some faster write-offs of their expenses, and everybody will enjoy that, but the fact is that's not going to solve the economic problems that we're, that we're facing. That's not going to stop a recession. It's not even going to shorten one. It may provide some temporary relief for the individual who benefit, but mm -hmm. we shouldn't kid ourselves that this is the answer to the economic problems. Uh, absolutely not, Michael. And But in fact, it, the economy is one of the top issues on the campaign trail, and all the candidates have professed to try to fix it for the American people. Um, you watched the debate last night. I'll start with you, Michael, since you just brought this up. Um, you watched the debate last night. Do yeah. you think that any concerns were answered in, in any of the discussions that have come forward so far? By and large, the candidates are in full pander mode, and the answers to the economy are going to require sacrifices I mean, it's going to be very difficult we dug ourselves into a hole of debt both nationally and for many families and we've outsourced the jobs we're importing products we're borrowing money from China and we're being, our banks are being bailed out by uh, Arab oil shakes and uh, and people in uh, throughout the the Asian continent so it's a very difficult situation now to say well let's fix it right away it's going to take time it's going to be difficult so the candidates don't want to really approach these things that's going to say you know mr. and mrs. public I can't really solve this right now. It's mm -hmm. going to take a big program. They don't want to bring that up. It's not a happy response. It certainly isn't. Uh, ben, thoughts on this? Well, I mean, a stimulus package is something that, 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 you know, I mean, whether or not it's a pander, it's also, you know, what economists, economists seem to think is a good idea, and that involves sending people checks in the mail. And that's something that politicians, you know, are, are eager to do and like to do. All right, Miguel, thoughts? We should yeah, be look, uh, this, it's all mental. Uh, the, uh, the stimulus package will help our mentality as a nation. We will go out and spend, and, it's, and we will think that the economy is better, and that's what will make the economy better. Mm -hmm. Let's, well, well, uh, I just want to add, I mean, we do know we're borrowing that money. Our government doesn't have the money. It's borrowing the money from China, presumably, so we can go out and buy more goods made in China. I mean, I'm not sure who we're bailing out here besides China. All right. <laughs> Let's talk pure politics. Uh, and, and the debate last night was riveting, I have to say. Um, we do have a, a sort of post-debate discussion going on. The tone was extremely cordial last night, uh, losing a little bit in translation today. We have uh, something from Los Angeles. Barack Obama uh, said he's more electable, uh, the more electable candidate for the Democrats. Let's listen for a second. I'm confident I will get her votes if I'm the nominee. It's not clear that she would get the votes I got uh, if she were the nominee. And that, I think, illustrates uh, the potential difference in terms of uh, uh, how we could run our campaigns. 
Uh, two members of my panel just said, ooh, that's tough. Very that strong point. Quite that's a, a departure huge from point you just made there. Yeah. Yes, any... Uh, I, I agree with him totally. I think that uh, especially with African Americans after what's happened with Bill Clinton and so forth, it's going to be very hard for Senator Clinton to attract the African American votes. They're not going to vote Republican, but they're just not going to go out to vote. Michael? I'm not sure why Obama in particular kind of slept walk through the debate last night. I mean, I'm not sure what his point was in approaching it that way. I mean, he obviously has some hard points to make. He went after her today on Iraq, on the 11th Amendment and, and her original vote. I'm not sure why he didn't bring it up more last night. There was something about the audience. The audience seemed to want a kissy-huggy thing, and the candidates complied. And right from the beginning, yeah. it was that. Um, ben, any thoughts on the tone of the debate last night and, and the new tone that's uh, being taken today? I mean, you know, it was a huge audience of, of I think, record-breaking audience, 8.3 million people, people who are not political junkies like us who want to see these guys slash each other up, but rather, you know, people who are maybe getting introduced to them to some degree for the first time, and, you know, they want it to seem like they were nice human beings. I mean, that was a big part of it. You know, I'd um, like, go ahead. Go ahead, ben. No, I mean, return, you know, returning to today, what's so striking about what Obama said there is last night he said oh, Hillary would be on his short list to be vice president. Based on what he said this morning, basically, that she's unelectable, I mean, that's the reason that she's <laughs> actually not on his short list. Yeah, I would say that's quite a departure from that. You know, I really would like to get into uh, something that's being talked about a lot, but, you know, we'd like to take apart the myth of this, and this is the Obama youth vote. Um, many people say he has galvanized the youth of the country, and I don't think that's deniable. But what is a, a question is how mobile will that youth be in going to the polls? Traditionally, they're not. Miguel, thoughts on this? Traditionally, they're not. You, you just read my mind. That's the, that's the problem. That, that was the problem all along with the Obama, Obama followers. And I think it, it will repeat itself. It's also the same situation with the Hispanic vote that he's so anxiously trying to get right now, he's kind of come late into that competition with Senator Clinton, who already has the support of the overwhelming majority of the Hispanic leadership. It has been suggested to me that we're working with a new, uh, a new situation with the youth because they can now watch reruns of the debate on YouTube, that they can become galvanized in their own way. They don't have to actually participate in a schedule of events. The only thing they really have to do is show up at the polls, and it may change the equation a bit. What do you think? Well, look, I I think Obama is a different character than, say, Howard Dean or uh, the other people who sort of had a youth buzz in the beginning of their campaigns and then fizzled. I think Obama has proven already that he's attracting that coterie of Democratic voters, plus uh, the black voters in the South that we saw turn out for him. I mean, he, he is galvanizing a coalition. He's really creating a coalition that hasn't existed in Democratic politics for some time. Mm -hmm. If he can hold it together and expand it, he's got a real shot. The campaign is really styling itself as a young campaign. We were struck by the sort of pop culture Warhol-esque posters that the Obama campaign has put out. Um, ben, any thoughts on the youth vote and the Obama campaign? Yeah, I mean, two things. First of all, he's, you know, they, they, people like us always say, oh, well, they never turned out. This year, they have, basically. They've turned out in proportion to the group, you know, people under 35 usually turn out less than baby boomers. That's not, that has not really been true this year. And this is partly because the Obama campaign, you know, thought really hard about it. They got everybody's email address. They got their cell phone numbers at rallies. They've worked really hard to contact people, to, you know, get the, to tell them if they haven't voted before how to vote, how to register. And it seems to be working. Mm -hmm. He has $32 million in January that buys a lot of pizza for uh, <laughs> workers. <laughs> I, I do want to follow up on something Michael said about building that democratic coalition because you got, you, they do have to be careful about who they invite into this coalition. People like moveon.org is not going to help them in the general election. The uh -huh. support that Obama just got from moveon.org, I think it's going to hurt them. Mm -hmm. uh, Kitty, you mentioned the money, too. I yeah. mean, th that's, that's another big distinction between these uh, previous insurgent campaigns. I mean, he's probably got at least if not more money than Clinton, and he's getting it from more people and smaller donations, and the beauty of that is they've invested in him. He can go back to them later. They haven't maxed out, and because they've given 25 or 50, they're probably going to follow him. This is not just an easy check they're writing and going to ignore it, so it's a different thing that so far it's working like we haven't seen it work for a long time. Mm -hmm. Uh, ben, quick one, or shall we go to break? Yeah, I mean, you know, the money's a huge deal, and it means that Hillary Clinton needs to close it out fast because, you know, she may be ahead, but the longer this runs, the more he can outspend her. 
Okay. We'll be back with our panel in a minute. Uh, coming up at the top of the hour, the Election Center with John Roberts. And John joins us now with a preview of that show. John? Kitty, good evening to you. Thanks very much. CNN Election Center coming up at the top of the hour. After being so agreeable last night, Senators Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama are back to highlighting their differences. Iraq and health care are in the uh, center of the spotlight as well. John McCain and Mitt Romney going at it. Both Barack Obama and John McCain pick up important endorsements in the state of California today. And Soledad O'Brien has a rare one-on-one -on -one interview with Michelle Obama. You're not going to want to miss that. She uh, talked to her for about a half an hour, got some interesting insight into the campaign, as well as her thoughts on what it might be like to be the First Lady of the United States. Kitty, join us at the top of the hour. We look for the forward to it, Center. John. Thank you. A reminder now to vote in tonight's poll. Do you believe that the greatest crisis in American government is the failure of our elected officials to represent the will of the American majority? Yes or no? Cast your vote at LouDobbs.com. We'll bring the results a little bit later in the broadcast. We'll be back with more of our panel in a moment. We'll now next discuss the Republican candidates. Stay with us. CNN Election Center next. Keep track of this wild election year with the best political team anywhere. CNN Election Center next. Steve Perillo for Perillo Tours in Italy with an amazing offer. Send for my free DVD of Magnificent Italy. You'll glide on the Grand Canal, climb the Leaning Tower of Pisa, and walk the ancient streets of Pompeii. Enjoy my DVD, then come to Italy and experience the real thing on a Perillo tour. To get your brochure and free DVD, visit PerilloTours.com or call 1-800-424-3400 right now. Think your pets are safe from fleas and ticks in winter? Think again. To protect against skin irritation and disease, they need flea, tick, and heartworm medication year-round. Plus supplements like Super Joint Enhancer for cold weather joint pain. Fortunately, they cost a lot less at 1-800-PET-MEDS. And they're delivered free right to your door with a 100% guarantee. I trust 1-800-PET-MEDS for fast service, free shipping, and big savings. Call now or order online. The New York Times has made its choice. Hillary Clinton for president. We are hugely impressed by the depth of her knowledge, by the force of her intellect, and by the breadth of her experience. Hillary will start immediately on challenges that will require concrete solutions, resolve, and the ability to make government work. Voters have to judge candidates not just on the promise they hold, but also on the here and now. Mrs. Clinton is more qualified to be president. I'm Hillary Clinton, and I approve this message. What you're about to see will change the way you look at weather. Presenting the revolutionary Rain-X Latitude wiper blades. Many traditional wipers have six pressure points that can create uneven pressure and cause streaking. Rain-X Latitude blades contour to hug the windshield for greater visibility and virtually no streaking. So it's like weather never happened. Get ultimate visibility with Rain-X Latitude wiper blades. Rain-X, outsmart the elements. We are back with Michael Goodwin, Miguel Perez, and Ben Smith. Gentlemen, let's uh, talk Republicans. Now, Mitt Romney uh, yesterday was attacking uh, John McCain for not being a true conservative. Uh, let's listen to what he said. Senator McCain has, over his career in, in Washington, demonstrated in, in very remarkable ways strong leadership, which has tended to be, uh, in his most notable accomplishments, leadership towards for liberal causes. Uh, what do you make of this, Miguel? I think it's very funny that uh, Mr. Romney wouldn't, would accuse anybody of being too conservative when he has flip-flopped so many times himself. We don't know what he is. Mm -hmm. You know, I have to say, um, Mr. Huckabee also came out and today and said, um, I don't consider McCain a liberal, uh, that Rom what Romney says is absurd. Um, ben, thoughts on this? I mean, maybe Mike Huckabee wants a, a slot on the ticket. It's a very sharp, accurate criticism in certain ways, but, but Romney's just a terrible messenger for it because it applies to him as well. Mm -hmm. John McCain got the endorsement of California Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger and Rudy Giuliani, who arguably would be on the more liberal side of the party. Right. Um, today he got conservative uh, endorsement of Ted Olson, former uh, Solicitor General and but then the LA Times. <laughs> LA Times and the New York Times. That's yeah, not exactly your know. conservative organs. Uh, look, uh, McCain is having 
a problem consolidating the conservative block of the party. It's, you know, he's done very well everywhere else, but that is still hanging out there. It's been a long time issue for him. That's his battle now to do it in the next few days. And so McC Romney recognizes this is his last chance is to upset that. So that's why he's sharpening his attacks. Romney is also spending enormous amounts of money at this point. Uh, it's not a surprise. I mean, it's the way to basically right. run the campaign. Um, any thoughts on his strategy? Bye, bye, bye. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you got the money, why not spend it? This is it. This is, this There's is no sense saving it now. What a, the, the, well, it's I his guess, money. <laughs> sorry, what? Sorry, what, ben? I mean, you know, conservatives always say that it's easier to spend other people's money than your own about government, <laughs> but Romney here is spending his own. Right. Yeah, 1,600 delegates at stake next Tuesday for the Democrats, uh, more than 1,000 for the Republicans. This is, this is basically the whole thing, isn't it? Yeah, I, I would add that, you know, it's kind of obscene that uh, Romney is trying to buy this election, though. I mean, that's the way I look at it. I mean, if the other guys had his uh, wealth, then, you know, the competition would be totally different. So he's basically buying himself, you know, pushing himself through our eyes with his commercials and so forth. Nobody's not spending, though. Yeah. You can't really... No, but, yeah. but, it, but he's, you know, it's his own wealth that he's spending, and he's sort of buying the election. Okay. Iraq, real is that out of this campaign right now, <laughs> the, the Iraq debate? Well, look, it, it, it has kind of fallen off a little bit to the extent that uh, the Democrats more or less agree with each other on what to do next. They don't agree about the past, but they agree with sort of going forward more or less. And the Republicans agree with each other about going forward. Soon, when we have the nominees, it'll be sharpened again. And I think what we saw today with the uptick of violence, the, the big blast in Baghdad, American deaths went up in January from December. December was a record low. January was 39 deaths. So we're st it's going to come back, and it's going to be sharply uh, defined. I think for the for the rest of the election along with the economy mm -hmm. Ben quick quick thought we're just about to finish you know Obama said today he that he's a better candidate than Clinton because he can kind of relitigate the beginning of the war with McCain that's the case he's now making that he'll he'll be able to argue that that you know McCain was wrong in the first place about the war and it seems like that's a central argument on the Democratic side mm -hmm. now what is clear to me right now is that there's one issue that it will be very clear for voters in November, and that is the war, because there, there's a gulf between the Republicans and the Democrats. The Republicans are accusing each other of having set a timetable, and the Democrats are setting all kinds of timetables. Yeah, it is absolutely not possible to run a campaign without getting back to this issue ultimately. Gentlemen, we have to hold it there. Thank you very much. Michael Goodwin, Miguel Perez, and Ben Smith, thank you. Still ahead, Heroes, our tribute to the men and women who served this country in uniform. We'll be right back.